Hello good day viewers. In our previous lesson, I have introduced to you partial law method of solving any form of quadratic equation. And I consider it the most simplest method of solving any form of quadratic equation because, you know, we have different forms of quadratic equations. Some can be solved by factorization, while others can only be solved using formula or completing the square method or even graphical method. But by using partial law method, you can solve all these forms of quadratic equations. The reason for making this video, someone asks why am I always using minus b divided by 2 as my constant. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a graphical explanation of partial law method of solving quadratic equations. But before then, let us solve this quadratic equation for reference. This is x squared minus 2x minus 15 equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation that can be solved by factorization. We are going to think of two numbers which when we multiply them together we get negative 15 and when we add them together we get negative 2 and the numbers are 3 and minus 5. If you multiply x plus 3 by x minus 5 you are going to obtain this quadratic equation back. And if you set each of these two factors to be equal to 0 you are going to obtain x equal to minus 3 or x equal to plus 5. One interesting thing about roots of quadratic equation is that if you multiply them together, it's like taking the constant term divided by the leading coefficient. This time around, we have our leading coefficient equal to 1. So once the leading coefficient is equal to 1, the product of roots will always be equivalent to the constant. Therefore, minus 3 multiplied by 5 will always give us minus 15. And also, if you add them together, you're going to get minus the coefficient of the middle term. And the coefficient of the middle term is minus 2. And minus minus 2 is plus 2. Therefore, you can see that minus 3 plus 5 is equal to plus 2. So the idea he used here after his investigations, he realized these two roots can be obtained by, by taking x equal to minus b divided by 2 plus a constant, let's call it y, though he used u, right? And the second one can be obtained by taking the same minus b divided by 2, then minus that constant. So if this are the roots, remember, after multiplying the roots, it will be equivalent to the uh, constant term. So he went ahead to multiply them together. So before I multiply them, I want to simplify this. Uh, and this is the purpose of making this video. Minus b, you know, b is minus 2. If you take minus of that, you're going to get plus. Plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. So our two roots are either 1 plus y or 1 minus y. So if you multiply them together, you're going to get negative 15, which is the constant. So let's do that. 1 plus y multiplied by 1 minus y. This is equal to negative 15. This is difference of two squares. You take the first term, you square that. One squared is one. You subtract second term squared. This is equal to negative 15. Making y squared the subject is, is equal to 1 plus 15. And 1 plus 15 is equal to 16, right? And 4 or minus 4 are the only numbers you can square to get 16. Therefore, y is plus or minus 4, right? Though you can use 1 because you can see even here we have plus or minus. So if you want to get your roots back, all you have to do is to substitute the value of y back into our main roots, which are 1 plus y and 1 minus y. So you can see that 1 plus 4 will give us 5, which is this, right? And 1 minus 4 will give us this minus 3 back. So let me show you how partial law of 10 this minus b divided by 2 graphically. I have already constructed the graph of this x squared minus 2x minus 15, which is this. You can clearly see that. The roots are minus 3 and positive 5. You can see them here. They are exactly where the parabola crosses the x-axis. This is the x-axis. So there is what we call line of symmetry. A line of symmetry is a line that divides a parabola into two equal parts. And how can we obtain that? We can obtain that 
by adding the two roots together and divide by two. That would give us halfway between the two roots, right? So um, if you add negative three and five together, you're going to get um, positive two, right? If you divide them by two, you're going to get one. So at x equal to one, you are halfway in between the two roots. So let me draw a line in between them at x equal to one, look at it here. So the reason why partial law decided to take this value is that if you count from this line to this root and from the same line to the other root, you're going to obtain the same unit, right? Let's count. One, two, three, four. From the line of symmetry to our roots to the right hand side is four units. And if you count to the left hand side, one, two, three, four. So it's better to choose this value which is unknown, but it can be obtained using minus b divided by 2 if the leading coefficient is 1. But if it is otherwise, you have to divide by 2a, where a is the leading coefficient. So Mr. Portial Law knew that without quadratic graph, this line of symmetry can be obtained using formula, which is minus b divided by 2a. And let's substitute, you realize we are going to get 1. So x will be equal to minus, what is b? You know b is the coefficient of x, which is also minus 2. This is minus 2, divide by 2. And minus minus is plus. We have 2 divided by 2 equal to 1. So the line of symmetry can be obtained from the equation without constructing any graph. And we know that it is halfway between the two roots. And since this 4 is unknown, we can declare it with something else. So if you add... 4 here, you're going to obtain this, and if you subtract 4, you're going to obtain the other root. So if 4 is unknown, you can declare it with something else like, uh, let's say, a and a. So you subtract a, you add a. So what partial law did was to take the line of symmetry, which is 1, and add a, which is going to give the other root to the right-hand side, and if you take 1, which is the line of symmetry, and subtract a, it will give you the other root. So after this, you're going to multiply these two factors together, and you set them to be equal to the constant, which is negative 15. Solve for a, and whatever a is, you come here, substitute it back, and obtain the roots. And this is applicable for all forms of quadratic equation, whether they have imaginary roots or irrational roots. It doesn't matter. So this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting videos. Bye-bye.